unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Dillian White suing the WBC Part 2. Frank Warren responds and Tyson Fury responds to these new information. <laughs> what up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Hit the link below. Sign up for my Patreon. It should be fun. I got some new stuff that I'm going to be shifting over to the Patreon and YouTube channel members. I've already started it. They've been notified. And, you know, it's a chance to become part of the Egos Army family, La Familia. And it should be fun. So, you don't want to miss out link in the description for patreon to become a youtube channel member hit the join button next to the subscribe button now frank warren and tyson fury have both responded to the news that dillian white will be suing the wbc this first came out i believe sky sport was the first to report it and frank warren on his verified page it says on the dillian white position they have this graphic and it says, you can see why he's upset. He doesn't feel like he's been looked after. If Dillian was with me, he would have fought for a world title by now. I had Tyson Fury fighting for a world title within six months of signing him. We kept him nice and active and then got him the Wilder fight. So, you know, kind of a jab at Eddie Hearn. Frank Warren also, he said more than that. That's, you know, that's some of what he was saying. Um, I did see this picture. This is unrelated, but related to the heavyweight picture. That's Daniel Dubois, and he's on a boat. I don't know who is that, Brian Jennings? And then there's Joe Joyce. So I don't know if they're chilling or if they're filming something, but they were supposed to fight each other, and, you know, maybe the fight got done, like rescheduled. So I'm looking forward to that. Frank Warren, Dillian White mandatory let's see if that comes up yeah it looks like it did we'll go with them but it looks like a couple of people frank warren says wbc is not the problem as dillian white files grievances says frank warren has astonishingly spoken out in defense of dillian white reports of legal action against the wbc have been swirling around the media this week this was again confirmed by sky sports and Mauricio Suleiman of the WBC. As WBN understands the situation from the inside, White has merely filed a grievance against the rules and regulations, nothing more. Warren has now come out in support of White, state, stating the body snatcher should certainly look a lot closer to home for his troubles. Asked whether he considered White as an opponent for Daniel Dubois, Warren wasted no time, said absolutely. It says the Hall of Fame promoter said, quote, it is incredible what's happened with him really he was ranked number one with the WBO for God knows how long. He was ranked number one with the WBC too, and he's just not got the fights. If I were him, I'd be asking the question, why hasn't my promoter been able to get me those fights? Sounds like somebody else, new media. He's on about suing the WBC, but they don't seem the problem. It's remarkable, really. I can't think of another British fighter who's been left out to dry as much as him. He was the same stable as the WBO champion and couldn't get his shot. You can see why he's upset. He doesn't feel he's been looked after. At this point, Dillian must be wondering if he's ever going to get a shot over there. Warren was clear that if White were fighting under his banner, the situation would be different. If Dillian was with me, that's what I read earlier. He said he would have fought by, for a title now. Tyson Fury did an interview with Behind the Gloves as well, and he basically said that suing is not going to really probably work for Dillian White. 
And the reason he suggested this is basically what Bob Arum said. He said, we just went through a pandemic. So that shifted things, which is absolute fact. Things have been put on the back burner. Things have been moved around. It's not by anyone's immediate choice. This is just where the world is globally. So Bob Arum said the same thing. Bob Arum, you know, he's cutthroat. So Bob Arum also said if Dillian White tries to push the issue, he's going to speak with the WBC and try to have it pushed back, if not possibly franchise Tyson Fury so he don't even have to worry about any type of uh, mandatory situations similar to Canelo Alvarez and Lomachenko. And then Dillian White will, will really be, you know, up Shit's Creek without a paddle. Listen. On my channel, I keep it real. Dillian White, he's cool. He's a solid fighter. I've only covered one of his fights because he only fought in America once. And that was on a Terrence Crawford card. He fought Malcolm Tan or somebody. And I get why he's feeling scorned. But I can't have the same sympathy like Frank Warren. You know, so Frank Warren was kind of taking more of a dig at a promoter because him and Eddie don't get along. But I'm here to tell you, I can't feel the same sympathy because Dillian White brought this on himself. How many times do I have to tell you? Like, listen, there were reports. Like, I know I'm not the only one that's been in boxing and was paying attention. There were reports that Dillian White was being shopped and meeting up with PBC and meeting up with ESPN. And at one point, it looked like maybe the ESPN was close, right? So Bob Arum is basically starving White out and saying, hey, we got Wilder, and then we might go straight to the Joshua Fury fight if, if Fury gets past Wilder again, right? And we might make him the mandatory, uh, I mean, the franchise, so we don't have to worry about it, right? There were rumors that Dillian White was going to possibly sign with ESPN. He didn't. He has, I don't know now, but at the time, he was with Eddie Hearn on a case-by-case basis he didn't have a permanent contract do you understand how many fighters would love to be in dilly it looks like ryan garcia right now with golden boy would love to be in this position where he could shop other deals and he's working you know has a working relationship with his promoter but he's not bogged down ryan garcia and his promoter i did a separate video so check that out because it's not really related to to this but um there's a lot of people that would love, love, love to be in the position where they were a free agent, basically. Dillian White has this, or at least had it at the time, and he chose to stay loyal to Eddie Hearn and rematch room. Now, when he's not getting the fights he wants, why would I feel sorry for that when you went along with the okie doke? This is just, it's funny. Like I keep telling you, new media, we control the narrative it's funny that frank warren days after i've already said it and i've been saying it frank warren basically says the same thing you shouldn't be mad at the wbc you should be mad at your promoter this is what i said dillian white again i can understand he's annoyed because it looks like he's gonna have to wait longer but part of that is his his problem and I'm, I listen, I don't want to keep doing this every time we talk about this. You guys got to just take my word for it or check the old videos. Dillian White has had so many opportunities in final eliminators. And look, Dillian White, Luis Ortiz, eliminator order. You see the, 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 the links already highlighted. Dillian White, Luis Ortiz, eliminator ordered as w, WBC provides title status update. This is in 2018. He never fought Luis Ortiz. That's one final eliminator that he failed to fight, right? Dillian White eliminator with Q Brad Pulev. Q Brad Pulev, they had a, um, a sports company called Epic Sports and Entertainment that won the purse bid. And he was supposed to fight Q Brad Pulev. Boom. Look, see how I, I pulled this stuff up quick? See? IBF final eliminator between Dillian White and Kubrat Pulev set to take place in Bulgaria. Boom. So they had a Bulgarian company that won the purse bid and beat Eddie Hearn and rematch room. And guess what? Kubrat Pulev launched an attack on Dillian White and Eddie Hearn because Brian Jennings, 
was in talks to fight Joseph Parker at this very time. Again, this is in 2018. We're in 2020. Bryant Jennings, I repeat, was in negotiations to rematch Joseph or to fight Joseph Parker after Joseph Parker lost to Joshua and lost his belt. Dillian White was supposed to fight Kubrat Pulev, as you guys can see. Kubrat Pulev is Bulgarian. A Bulgarian company won the purse bid. They outbid Rematch Room and Eddie Hearn. So they have the rights to pick a date within a certain amount of time and stage the bout where they want. Eddie Hearn, being a control freak or whatever, didn't want Dillian White to travel to Bulgaria in Pulev's backyard. So he decided to instead make Joseph Parker coming off of a loss to Anthony Joshua and put it on pay-per-view because he felt that was a bigger money fight. This fight, Kubrat Pulev, was a final eliminator. So had Dillian White stayed the course and just fought this man, then he would be in line to fight for Joshua's newly reclaimed titles because Joshua just beat Ruiz back in December. But you see Pulev is launching an attack because Dillian White pulled out when the other the Bulgarian company wanted to put the fight, as I just showed you, in Bulgaria. And Pulev was down to fight Dillian White still in a final eliminator. But it was Eddie Hearn who fed Dillian White the information. Don't fight Pulev. They're trying to fight in, Pul uh, in Bulgaria. You'll get less money. And he convinced them because he wanted to sell box office pay-per-views with Joseph Parker and milk the UK public. So that's what he did. So you pulled out of another final eliminator. Look, q -Rat Pulev has launched an attack on Dillian White and Eddie Hearn after the surprise announcement the British fighter had agreed to fight Joseph Parker. Again, Joseph Parker was supposed to fight Bryant Jennings. But Eddie Hearn did a side, you know, contact him on the side, said, hey, we'll, we'll put you on pay-per-view if you fight Dillian White coming off your loss to Joshua. So he didn't stick to the script. Where I'm from, that's what we say. Stick to the script. Dillian White, came. he pulled out of another final eliminator. Pulev had been ordered to fight in a final eliminator. It's all right here. To fight in a final eliminator with Dillian White for the right to be mandatory challenger for the IBF title. Guess what? Fast forward to the future, since Joshua got his belts back, beat Ruiz in Saudi Arabia in December, he's an IBF champion. Now, a simple Google search will, will show you that they rescheduled Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev, right? Right before the pandemic. On March 2nd, or March 2020, yeah, March 2nd, Matchroom and Eddie Hearn and Top Ranks Bob Arum officially announced Joshua Pulev will fight at Tottenham. And it was supposed to happen June 20th. So it would have been coming up right now. However, that fight didn't take place because the pandemic pushed the fight. You know, there's no there's not going to be a fight in June. So that was unforeseen. But the fight was a done deal. So guess what? Look, they have a flyer for it and everything. This is the second time. Look, Saturday, 20, 20, June 20th. Look, you see it on. So you can't get mad at ego. You see it. They were supposed to fight a couple years ago. Pulev pulled out. He fought Takum. Then Pulev is still the mandatory or worked his way back up or whatever. And now Joshua has to fight him as a mandatory. So when we're screaming about Dillian White, oh, he, he didn't get a, a mandatory opportunity. He didn't get a title shot opportunity. This is his fault because he should have fought Pulev and beat Pulev if he could do it, right? In Bulgaria or whoever won, that's how a purse, a purse bid is an auction. So whoever wins the purse bid, they win. And this is why Pulev was mad at Dillian White and Eddie Hearn because Eddie Hearn did some sneak. Have you guys noticed Eddie Hearn keeps doing sneaky things to people? Brian Jennings thought he was fighting Joseph Parker, top rank. Unbeknownst to him, Joseph Parker was being pulled by Eddie Hearn. q Rat Pulev thought he was going to fight Dillian White in a final eliminator in Bulgaria. Unbeknownst to him, Eddie Hearn was conniving and working on Dillian White for Joseph Parker. 
on pay-per-view. So he pulled him out of the final eliminator. So now Joshua, when when the world comes back, he's probably going to fight Pulev. That could have been Dillian White getting a rematch. Dillian White, when he fought Joshua, Joshua wasn't a champion. So this would be the first time fighting Joshua since he's become a champion. It would be a rematch. So I, I, I don't feel bad. I, I don't agree with anybody, Frank Warren or anybody. Look, Q Brad Pulev says, I was expecting from Dillian White and his team to run away from the fight, but I didn't expect from them to be such bullish artists. Pulev said in a statement, and he said it on his website. They are extreme manipulators and plain schizophrenics. I can't believe what I'm hearing and what a tricky way they chose to run away from the fight in Bulgaria. Listen, new media, we control the narrative. Everything I am saying can be found in this content, which is all time stamped and postmarked, whatever you need. That's the fact. The whole time Hearn kept talking in circles about negotiations and how they are still trying to bring me to the UK. All this while a date and place was already announced by the winner of the bid, us. Once again, Eddie Hearn, control freak, didn't want anybody else running the show. And then he came up with this cockamamie plan to put Dillian White in there with Joseph Parker coming off of an Anthony Joshua loss because he thought he could make money and, you know, maybe they made some money and they sold pay-per-view. But in the meantime, you screwed Dillian White over because he didn't get to compete in his final eliminator, which would have made him the IBF mandatory, which is now what Kubrat Pulev is. And it looks like Kubrat Pulev is going to get the Joshua fight. This is very simple arithmetic. That's not including the one that I started the video with. Luis Ortiz, another final eliminator per the WBC that he was convinced. It's like, who is who is feeding Dillian White these this information? He should be mad at no one else other than his own team and Eddie Hearn, bro, because there's a reason Pulev is fighting Joshua next because he stuck to the script. He already had the, you know, the ranking and he just kept doing what the IBF told him to do. And boom, he's up for the Joshua fight. It got pushed back because the pandemic, but it looks like he's next in line. Same thing with Usyk. Usyk, he did his thing in the previous division, cruiserweight. So he got a generous ranking with the WBO or whatnot. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. It was Dillian White and Eddie Hearn who constantly made their own rules and pulled out of final eliminators, didn't listen to the WBC, didn't listen to the IBF, didn't listen to then WBC champion Deontay Wilder, who made like silent packs and said, and I can't even say silent, but Deontay Wilder, he told you, he said, I'll fight you, come to PBC. We can get it done. It'll be easier. He said, I'll fight you. If you fight Luis Ortiz, these are all things that Dillian White did not do. Right. So no matter. No matter what you say, look, somebody made a video about it. Deontay Wilder says Luis Ortiz give Dillian White, blah, blah, blah. Deontay said, look, I pull. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I just I must be the greatest challenge issued. This is a UK website. Talk sport. Deontay Wilder says he this is why I love new media, because you can't run from all of the breadcrumbs are there. The paper trail is there. Deontay Wilder says he will fight Dillian White. This is when he was the WBC champion because he just lost that last February to Tyson Fury. He says he will fight Dillian White if he beats his potential next opponent, Luis Ortiz. He says you fight Luis Ortiz. He's solid. I can vouch for him, beat him, and you have my word that I will fight you. And guess what? Dillian White and Eddie Hearn didn't do it. I'm a man of my word, Wilder told the boxing voice after hearing the news. It says, to the possibility with the Cuban having accepted White's challenge for a fight December 22nd. And the funny thing why this is so um, fresh to me is because I'm a reporter. 
I am a vlogger. I talked about all of this in real time. So I remember what I said. So shout out to Talk Sport for leaving these links, these breadcrumbs. Send the contract. Ruthless Cuban heavyweight Luis Ortiz accepts December 22nd date to fight Dillian White. December 22nd. So Luis Ortiz said, send the contract. It's all contained here. Dillian White has beaten Lucas Brown and Joseph Parker, blah, blah, blah. Luis Ortiz disputed this and called White out for a bout on the undercard of Wilder versus Fury, to which Dillian White replied, suggesting that they meet on December 22nd in London instead. Now Ortiz has responded once and for all, proclaiming that he is more, look at this stuff. He is more than happy to travel to fight White on that date. After much thought and consideration, I accept your challenge, Ortiz told Boxing Scene. If you won't come down to the USA, then I'll step off of the Wilder Fury card. Luis Ortiz is such an animal that he was going to get a fight at the Staples Center on the undercard of Wilder Fury, which I went to and covered and was lit. He said, I'll step off this Wilder Fury card, fly over to the UK and fight you in your own backyard. Done deal. Enough talking that rubbish you speak. Send over the contract and I'm there. Now you've got yourself a real problem, son. So now what are you going to do? It is well known that Dillian White is also currently in negotiations to rematch Derek Chisora on December 22nd at the O2 Arena. However, the pair are yet to come close to agreeing on a deal. Now, to make this even more fucked up and dig the dagger in deeper, they had problems making Dillian White, Derek Chisora 2 over money. And with that being the case, it seems like Dillian White, Derek Chisora 2 fall apart over money. Let's see if that pulls it up. If but I remember this. They they were scrapping, they had issues. You guys could do the research on that part. But um basically Dillian White was gonna rematch Derek Chisora and um the money wasn't the money wasn't good enough for Chisora, right? Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. Derek Chisora leaves Dillian White bemused by promising to go through him like a... No, that's, that's not it. That's after the fight was done. But anyway, basically, they had hangups in the negotiation. They had hangups in the negotiation where the they couldn't get Dillian White and Derek Chisora over the line because Dillian White or Derek Chisora, they, they were commanding more money, right? So anyway... Dillian White, the point I'm making is this. Dillian White could have switched and said, okay, Derek Chisora, he's tripping. Let me fight Luis Ortiz. But guess who Who do you think Eddie Hearn and Dillian White end up fighting? Not Luis Ortiz. Derek Chisora, a guy he had already beaten. Why does he need to read? That's why I call it rematch room, and I come up with that. I'm the one that created that. Why would you need to, why would you rather put on pay-per-view Instead of a fresh match with Dillian White and Luis Ortiz, why would you not choose to put the fresh match with Luis Ortiz on there and make Dillian White fight a guy that he had already beaten? This time he knocked him out. Okay, look, he knocked him out December 22nd. So you just seen it. Luis Ortiz said, I'll fight you that date. And Eddie Hearn and Dillian White said, no, you won't because we're fighting Derek Chisora who wanted more money and there was complications making the fight, right? Look, he had already beat Chisora two years prior, like I said, in 2016. This is why I don't, I don't feel bad because you've had so many opportunities if you would have did certain things different, but you and your team chose not to for whatever reason. So now Bob Arum's trying to stall you out and franchise Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's mocking you saying you'll never get a shot. Wilder don't have the belt. He was willing to fight you when he did have the belt, but you didn't go through with nothing he said. You didn't go through with the promise he made by fighting Luis Ortiz. The WBC told you to fight Luis Ortiz. The IBF told you to fight Q Brad Pulev. You did none of this. You did your own thing. You say, hey, I'm rematching a guy I'd already beat, Derek Chisora. Hey, 
You know, I'm pulling out of the Pulev fight and leaving him hanging. And I'm going to fight Joseph Parker coming off of a loss. This is all fact. Look, Joseph Parker, watch. He was coming directly off a loss. That's why it's called rematch room. Look, Anthony Joshua lost. And then he fought next, Dillian White. So he lost in March 31st and fought Dillian White in July on pay-per-view in the UK coming off of a loss. So this fight didn't really mean anything. It was just a pay-per-view Joseph Parker is not the, the biggest name and he, he no longer had a belt. So you waited, you gave Joshua Joseph Parker first. Why didn't you give Dillian White Joseph Parker when he had the belt? And then the winner, which was Dillian White, fight fight AJ. So bottom line is Eddie Hearn used Dillian White as a pawn to do his dirty deeds. And he was loyal. He was a loyal citizen of Zamunda or whatever. And he did it. And now he's feeling he's feeling angry because he's not getting what he wanted he wants the big fights and he wants the title shots and he wants to prove himself i get that from you know being someone who's competitive myself but you also allowed eddie hearn and or whoever else gave you the um direction in your career barry hearn or whoever you let them steer you down a one-way street and then now you're you're mad and suing the wbc that's what happened that's literally what happened so I don't know who's advising Dillian White, but there's a lot of stuff that he could have did different along the way, and he would have been had a title shot. He would have had a title shot, title opportunity, a big money fight, and real talk, he would have got fights that people would have respected the win. Luis Ortiz, this was before Wilder knocked him out again. If if Dillian White, instead of Derek Chisora, a guy he had beat two years prior, if he would have beat Luis Ortiz like Wilder did, in the second fight or the first fight then he would have got a lot of respect but he was advised not to do that and to instead fight a guy he had already beat on his record what does that prove you know he pulled joseph parker from a brian jennings fight to make a pay-per-view but you pulled out of a final eliminator so now when kubrat pulev is about to fight joshua you're left in the cold i mean that's what happens. That's what happens when you take bad advice. So this is the person you should be mad at. He's the one that put you in these positions and you went along with it. So to me, Dillian White is complicit. If you listen, the point, what's the point of having a team? The whole point of having a team is to have a team you trust and people who are in your corner making the decisions that are most impactful to you and the decisions that put you in the best position. So if your team is not doing that, then you have deeper issues. You see what I'm saying? So if you have a team, then you guys all got to be on the same page in unison. And if your team is not making you the priority, you've seen what fighters have done in the past. A la Floyd Mayweather. He's probably the most famous example. He felt top rank was guiding his career in a certain way. And he felt he had more to accomplish and more to do. And he could do better on his own. So what did Floyd do? Famously, Floyd bought himself out of his top rank contract for 750000 I have a video of Floyd saying this directly at a Gervonta fight in Baltimore that I was at. So I have that on tape. That's what Floyd did. He wasn't feeling how top rank was moving him or whatever, or the amount of money he was getting with them, whatever. So he made his own lane, got a new team, got with Al Heyman, billion dollars later, history later. You know, sell out events later. He's the man because he did things his own way. Even in the rap game, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle had an early um, record deal. And he said he liked a lot of the people that worked at the record label. But then they do. They had um, some type of um, shift where they had new management in. And he said he didn't get along with them the same. He said because the new A&Rs and new people, they didn't bring past talent in the in the they didn't bring the past talent into the building so they didn't get the same credit so artists that were already there they kind of got left on the shelf and forgotten about why those record execs after they made the acquisitions or transitions or whatever they were looking for new talent so they would get the credit for it and commissions and stuff like that so same thing nipsey hustle got out he asked he said man just let me do my own thing release me and he asked for a release from his record label he did it and then 
he started selling hundred dollar albums and mixtapes and stuff and he better defined his 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 um legacy before he passed by doing things his own way and getting out of that record label dillian white could have done all of this but he chose to stay loyal to something that you know ultimately didn't put him as the first priority we know it anthony joshua is eddie hearn's cash cow not dillian white so he gets the preferential treatment that's why you see eddie hearn and tyson fury doing videos they're not talking about dillian white they talking about after i get past wilder then i'm going to the joshua fight and we can make all this money and this and this so now dillian white's angry and trying to sue people which is bad advice to me because this was all preventable had you switch your team or made sure your team was you know doing stuff and then like look this is him you can't keep hiding wbc do the right thing blah 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 like they he he's always like bad mouth the wbc so do you really think they're gonna rule in your favor and stuff i don't know man it's just it is what it is we unpack so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.